Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.4 Beta 4. iOS 17.4 Beta 4 is out to developers and soon to public beta testers, typically by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. Now this update came in at 571.1 megabytes on my 15 Pro Max and was about the same on the other devices here. Along with this, Apple also released VisionOS 1.1 Beta 3, iPadOS 17.4 Beta 4, WatchOS 10.4 Beta 4, and all the others with tvOS, HomePod OS, and Mac OS. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. The build number is 21E5209B. We're getting close to a final release. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. And this update does not have a modem update if you're on an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. However, it does have a beta update on the 14 Pro and Pro Max and some others as well. So that should help with overall connectivity. Now, as far as new features, Beta 1 brought new emojis, side loading, transcriptions to podcasts, Siri updates, and more. But this update brings something I've been asking Apple for for a very long time. If we go into our settings and then we go down to battery, under battery, you'll see that battery health now says normal. It no longer gives a percentage that you view right away. In fact, there'll be three different statuses here. It will say normal, service, or unknown. So this is something they can change. And then if we want more details, we can go into this where we'll see our maximum capacity as well as our cycle count where they've removed this from the about page and then also our manufacture date and first use. So this is something they've completely redone. Unfortunately, it's not on older phones yet. There's not really a reason it shouldn't be, but they haven't brought it over to the older phones, whether that's an iPhone 11, iPhone 14, it's just not there. We just have battery health and charging and then our maximum capacity. So it's a little bit different in the fact that they haven't brought it to older devices, but hopefully they'll do that in future updates. There's not really a reason not to. Also, another thing they've mentioned is under battery health here, if we go to about battery and warranty, it actually says the original battery was designed to retain 80% capacity at 1000 cycles under ideal conditions. This actually contradicts what Apple says on their website about maintaining battery health. So if we go into that website, you can see on their battery website, and I'll link this in the description below, but it says 80% of its original capacity at 500 cycles. So maybe they're getting ready to change this, update the batteries in iPhone 16 or something else, but that's something it looks like they're updating. Also something else that's out to everyone right now is in Apple Music. If we go into music, you'll now have replay and share. So you'll have replay and share your top music of the month. Unfortunately, this is not found directly within Apple Music. You have to actually go to a website to see all of this and jump in and see all of your statistics. So if we jump in, give it a moment here, it will have you sign in. Once you do that, you'll now have this month's milestone. So I wish they would incorporate this into Apple Music, but this is available to everyone right now. They're also testing a feature that could import libraries from other services. So maybe Spotify or something else, that's something they're testing. Now, another thing to go along with music is CarPlay. Now supported vehicles using Apple CarPlay with Apple Maps will actually present a new instrument cluster. This will actually be available in supported vehicles such as Porsche and Aston Martin to start, maybe some others, but basically you'll be able to swap your maps between the main screen and then the vehicle cluster screen as well. So if I can test this out, I will, but at this point it looks like it's not available in the vehicles I own, but let me know if you've seen this anywhere else. Also in the EU, if you actually use Spotlight to search for an app, maybe you want to search for Chrome, and then you go ahead and download it from here, tapping the little cloud icon or installing it for the first time, you'll actually have a new splash screen that pops up. And this was sent over by viewers on my Telegram channel, so we're always talking about things like this there. And you'll see it says App Store would like to install an app. And then it actually says verify the information before installing, and then you can install the app for here. This goes along with those third-party app stores that Apple's getting ready for. Also, if we go into settings and we scroll down to privacy and security, then we scroll to the bottom and go to analytics and improvements, we have a new option here for improve Apple Pay. Now, this actually wasn't there before. It said something along improve Apple Wallet. Now it says Apple Pay, and it will share additional details. You can see all about it here. So if you want to check that out and enable that, you can it's off by default. Also, Apple sent out another thing to all users of Apple Pay today. And if we go to our email, you'll see it says, enjoy a movie and free popcorn with Apple Pay. And it says, 
For this movie, we can actually go see that at a Regal Cinema, so we can get tickets here. I just received this in an email. Many people are seeing this as well. Also, there's more in the code about Apple getting ready for third-party app stores and sideloading of apps, so that's something that we'll see in the future once this releases to the public. Now, Apple also removed a few changes with Beta 3 last week, and they didn't bring them back yet. The Safari navigation bar is still fairly small. You can see here they didn't bring it back. Also, the one thing I was really hoping they'd bring back was the live activity for the stopwatch. Swipe home and there's no live activity. That's something I would love to see them bring back. It makes sense to have it in the dynamic island. So hopefully we'll see that in future updates. Now, as far as bug fixes, well, they did fix the notification bug in previous updates, thankfully, and it's working just like you would expect it to work. Finally, after fixing that, now they've added the battery update. Also, they've improved AirDrop, where oftentimes it wouldn't even find my iPhone 11 since it's on a different account. If I go into photos and try and share it, sometimes it would show up, sometimes it doesn't. Now it shows up right away. So that's something they've improved. They've also fixed an issue with wallpaper. If we go into our wallpaper, and if we use the stock iPhone 15 Pro wallpaper, you'll see if we go to the lock screen, it darkens, it relightens back up, it behaves as you would expect. So based on dark mode and light mode, it will change just like you would expect before, where for some reason this sort of was broken in previous updates or the previous beta. So let's switch that back. Now if we go ahead and take a look at the release notes, we'll go into the feedback app, give it just a moment here, see if they've updated it, and they haven't updated it here, but if we go to the publicly available website in the release notes, you'll see there's still some known issues, which is to be expected. They've resolved quite a few issues with things such as the App Store, as far as being able to connect to the iTunes Store, Apple Maps and CarPlay and vehicle instrument clusters, I mentioned that new feature before. There's also some resolved issues with HomeKit, resolved issues with Maps, Messages, and much more. So the emoji sticker issue people were having, that's been fixed. However, the one issue that's still there for me is the wallpaper dimming bug. You'll see if we look in this top section here, if I swipe home, it sort of desaturates. So that's something that I'm seeing still. Why we're seeing that, I'm not sure. It wasn't there until earlier versions of iOS 17. Now, as far as overall performance, well, animations do seem to be a little bit smoother or faster, similar to beta one. This is sort of seen in a continual improvement overall. However, I did have a little bit of stutter going into Safari, but in general, it seems to be pretty fast. If we go into music on both devices here, switch between maybe our browse, we'll see here, we'll go to library. Of course, this is loading over Wi-Fi, so it can take a moment, but you'll see things seem to be pretty fast in general. Scrolling, ProMotion is nice and fast, just scrolling really fast, ramping up and down, and in general, it's behaving as you would expect. Now, in using this, the phone is quite warm on the back just a little bit. It's installing that big update, probably indexing in the background, and give it a couple of days, it will probably settle down. It's not hot to the touch, but it is a little bit warmer than it typically is. As far as the overall battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And again, we can now check the actual cycle count right here in battery, at least on the iPhone 15 models. So I have 111 on my main device, which is pretty good, considering I've used it most of the time since new. And as far as the overall battery life, well, we have 100% battery health, as you saw here, and battery life is sort of getting me through a day. Today I have two hours and 27 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 40 minutes of screen idle time, and I'm using about 46% of my battery. Yesterday was much less. So depending on what I'm doing throughout the day, I actually, as you may have noticed, have a little bit of a raspy voice. I haven't been feeling great. And so I haven't used it as much, but it gets me through a day, but not like it used to. So hopefully this improves it. Many people were pretty happy with the battery life on beta three though. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.4 beta four, so far with beta three, it was pretty stable. I did have occasional lockups and issues with Wi-Fi, but in general, it was mostly stable for the, what I was doing with it in general. So if I was going into weather, just going into music, playing music, it worked pretty well. Occasionally there were some hiccups, but as we get closer to a final release, I would expect this to be stable. So if you want to try it out, you definitely can just make sure you have a backup. Now, as far as iOS 17.4 RC is, which I would expect next at this point, that's probably going to be sometime around the 27th or 28th with a final release, probably around March 4th. 
Now, it's possible we could see a beta 5 since the build number ends in a B. Typically, we'll get to the letter A, and then we'll have an RC. So we could have another beta. However, last year, we didn't have another beta. We had four betas, then an RC. So I would expect that this time around. So maybe March 4th, we'll have a release. If not, March 11th. But either way, Apple has to get this out pretty quickly to comply with the EU rules with the side loading in third-party app stores. As far as iOS 17.5, you can expect that a day or so after with the first beta, and then maybe we'll get some of those features back that they've removed with the stopwatch and more. Now, as far as benchmarks, I did run it twice as the initial benchmarks weren't great. It'll probably improve, and we'll talk about that more on the weekend, and we'll take a closer look at that. But you'll see we have 2,899 for single core, 7,162 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history, you'll see it was a little bit low before, but it was higher than beta three, at least on the weekend and close enough with the single core that I don't think you're going to notice any difference in general. It's pretty smooth. So that's pretty much everything in iOS 17.4 beta four so far. If you found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.